I work with global enterprise clients to develop best-in-class user-generated content strategies. So when I refer to user-generated content, we're talking about all of those conversations that are happening everywhere where your customers are talking to each other and hopefully to you as a brand about their experiences of your product, your services and your brand. So for Bazaar Voice in particular, we're looking at ratings and reviews, um, giving customers the opportunity to ask questions and answer questions, um, and generally the, the sharing of conversations across your channels. So today what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about how Changes in Customers is bringing user-generated content to the forefront of marketing strategy. And so what I'm going to do is deep dive into some best-in-class examples to show how social conversations can influence your brand's approach to campaign marketing. So in terms of this slide, um, it wasn't just because I thought it would be a cool introductory slide, which I did, um, but also because it demonstrates a social persona. And this is the social persona of the uh, millennial generation. So when we talk about millennials, we're looking at those people who are currently aged between mid-teens and mid-thirties. And this generation um, relies heavily on social media. This is how they engage, this is how they interact, and this is what they know. They take charge of their own identities. And this huge reliance on social media is changing the way that they buy and purchase. And most importantly, for the people in this room, it's this generation that by 2017, which will hold the most spending power. So these are the people that are going to be buying your products and services, and the people that you're going to be talking to. Now, these new customers have grown up with digital and social, and they probably know more about social than the brands that are actually trying to engage with them through this channel. And it's for this reason that they buy differently. We know that two thirds of all millennials won't even consider making a purchase without getting information from friends or strangers. It's always been the case that people trust people. However, this generation has access to more people uh, more quickly through their, their social networks. And this is having a massive impact upon how they buy. They're moving away from the traditional purchase funnel uh, to, to a new way of buying where they require social validation. So as I said, people trust people. But I think it's also fair to say that trusts in brands are eroding. And when we consider these examples, can we really be surprised? But it's not just big security breaches that um, could be driving this erosion in trust, but also we would argue that we're still experiencing a hangover from the era of mass marketing. And I think this slide sums it up very well in that the biggest brands with the biggest wallets that shout the loudest got heard. However, that is now beginning to change. And this quote um, from Nelson Survey shows that not only is there a sort of erosion in terms of brand trust, but also a decline in trust for advertising. A recent study by Nielsen showed that um, trust in TV alone has fallen by 24% between 2009 and 2011. And that was globally. Actually, here in Europe, that percentage was even higher. And I think um, Wendy Clark, who is Senior VP um, at Coca-Cola for Integrated Marketing, sums up very well what impact this is having upon the way that we market uh, to the new customer. In that the days of controlling the message are absolutely over. At best, you'll be invited in and you'll get to co-create and participate with customers. And this pretty much sums up um, 
the change in direction from talking at and driving a brand message to customers to beginning to engage in a way that is relevant to them. If we go back to the, the Nielsen study, we saw that there was a, a decrease in trust in advertising, but actually in the case of earned media, so the user-generated content that we were talking about earlier, actually 92% of customers trust this method above advertising. And when we look specifically at reviews, so reviews that have been submitted by your customers, they can see that customers trust customer reviews 12 times more than advertising. So when we take this into consideration, when we are working with clients and marketing teams, what we're now asking is not what message are you delivering to your customers, but how can you become part of the content? How can you engage with customers um, in a way that's useful and helpful to their lives? The traditional ad model of interrupting content is no longer relevant to the new customer. We need to understand how we can add value to social conversations without detracting from the experience. And we need to do this across the many channels that your customers now frequent. The Google Zero Moments of Truth survey um, study that they did last year, which if you haven't read it, is, is a really good read, found that on average customers consult 10.2 sources of, of information before they make a decision. So not only are you dealing with a new and complicated purchase path, but you're doing it across more channels th than ever before. So whilst there is no silver bullet to um, solving the, the, the problem of the new customer, at Bizarre Voice, we, authentic, like, we believe and we advocate that you embrace user-generated content. I think this sums it up very well. This is a, a signage in a storefront in the US. They are listening to what the customers think and are openly delivering a message. And whilst obviously this is to the, to the extreme, what we're suggesting is that by including user-generated content and using the voice of the customer in your marketing campaigns, you can add authenticity and start to rebuild trust in the brand. So taking this approach, the word of mouth approach, again, it's not a new concept. Since the dawn of commerce, everyone knows that the word of mouth marketing is extremely powerful. But the difference is now that technology and social media has meant the scale at which word of mouth can happen has increased exponentially. The impact that one customer can have on your business and your brand is huge. And, and this is a scary concept. And when we work with clients and particularly the marketing organizations, one of the biggest barriers we come up against is we don't want negative reviews on our website because it will affect band sentiment. But, but we respond with, just because you're not letting these social conversations happen on your site and your estate, it doesn't mean that they're not happening. So whilst it's a scary concept, we believe that there's a huge opportunity for marketers to, to grasp hold of user-generated content um, and use it to engage directly with your customers and to build a brand connection like you've never done before. So what I'm going to do now is just dive into some case studies where we're seeing this being used at the moment. Um, and we're going to start by looking at the impact that including user-generated content a key decision points in your customer journey can have. So here we're using um, Argos as our case study. So as we know, Argos are a um, big UK uh, high street retailer. And as we know, the, the high street has been suffering uh, for, for a long period of time now. And so they have to change, they have to adapt to this new consumer. And Argos have fully bought into the fact that building their organization around the new digital age is what's required. In the last year, sales in multi-channel grew to 46% of their overall sales, which equates to about 1.9 million. And of course, this is driven by the, the new customer, the changes in trends, the changes in technology, but also because Argos see that multi-channel is a way that they need to move forward. 
and therefore a key element in their marketing strategy for the next three to five years is driven around user-generated content. So with, with, with Bizarre Voice, they've acquired 1.5 million reviews across all of their products. They have 300k questions and answers, um, and what they are doing is that they are amplifying this user-generated content that they have across all of their channels. So on their website, on their mobile applications, in catalogs, in store, on brand sites, so you can see Argos reviews on samsung.co.uk. And what they are doing is they are filling the knowledge gaps and providing the social validation that the new customer wants at each point of their, their customer journey. And on site alone, they've seen a 50% increase in conversion. So those people who are engaging with their user-generated content are converting 50% more than those who don't. And so you can imagine the impact that that has on the bottom line. In addition, they're also seeing uh, customers are making better informed decisions, so they're seeing lower returns. And they're also taking great insights from all of this um, all of these conversations that are, ha that are happening around their brand. But actually this is just start, so starting to scratch the surface um, of what you can do with um, a user-generated content strategy. Domino is obviously um, a household name now. Um, since 2010, they have invested heavily in brand repositioning and a business infrastructure that allows them to be a truly customer-centric organization. They are driving and striving to become a business that truly understands, listens to, and responds to their customers. So they have been working with us um, to, to develop a platform that allows them to do this. It lets them know direct from their customers where they need to improve but it also tells them what they're doing well. And this has actually become a big source of inspiration for uh, Domino's employees, which, which I'll uh, show you slightly later. But I suppose what a really good example um, of this approach to customer centricity is that they launched a new range of chicken wings. And rather than going with their typical launch campaign of, of driving their proposition, they actually launched the chicken wings with a totally user-generated content-driven um, approach to their marketing campaigns across every channel, so uh, TV, digital ads, emails, even their boxes. They were asking customers for feedback um, on their new range of products. And within 24 hours, they knew that their new, uh, their new product just was not being received well at all by their customer base. The average rating was low and it just wasn't hitting the mark. So what they did was they took all of that, those social conversations that were happening across their channels and they, they took the insights from that and immediately briefed their operations and supply chains. They changed the recipe by taking into account what customers were suggesting, what they identified as flaws, and they relaunched the product using this, this uh, customer-generated content. They also um, use all of the, the social conversations that they're encouraging and engaging with um, in their above-line marketing campaigns because they firmly believe it helps break through the clutter of an already busy um, ad space. And I'm just going to show you an example of this. I don't ever want to send out a bad pizza. It's got my name on it. Pizza Tracker lets you track your order at every stage on Domino's.com, and it lets you leave a review instantly. Tracker gives accountability. It lets you know if Jess is making your pizza, I'm Jess, and I'm making your pizza. Right now, we have one coming up, so that's a good review. We've got some fives, which is awesome. We've got some ones and twos, which is not so awesome. Good reviews and bad reviews, they make us better. So we want to know how we're doing. What more people reviews? If more people in the store, or... So get our $5.99 deal online and tell us how we did. I think that raises the bar just a little bit higher. 
So I'm sure I don't need to um, sort of emphasise the prime state of ad space in terms of Times Square and the primetime TV to which Domino's are building their, their campaigns around. As we saw from that short video, they're truly listening to customers, which is allowing them to improve. But more to the point, it gives them a way to talk to customers in a different way. They're no longer shouting about their message. They're able to use their customer's voice to, to drive and encourage and retain new customers. We also have some more examples. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly jump into some campaigns that use user-generated content to achieve um, other marketing objectives. So White Stuff are a medium-sized retailer that we've been lucky enough to work with for a couple of years now. Um, and they're known for their, their innovative uh, marketing campaigns. And they came to us with the objective and the brief of building brand awareness around their core values. So their whole brand is built around supporting uh, charities and more specifically um, underprivileged children in, the, in their local communities. So what they wanted to do is launch a campaign that helped raise awareness around um, those core values, but also engage their customers. So what they did is they launched the UHT campaign, which was the ultra hot totty. And what they asked, they asked for their customers to submit photos and a short story around why their man was um, the ultimate um, hot totty. So they were generating user-generated content, driving traffic to the site, and encouraging um, other customers to engage by voting. And those, um, those men that received the top 12 votes were then taken into a charity calendar which was sold with all of, all of the proceeds going to charity. So what this did was, um, over the period of the campaign, um, positively impacted SEO by generating rich new content on site, um, engaged users and encouraged them to converse and talk to one another. Um, as well as impacting the bottom line and ultimately driving awareness around the core values. In a similar sense, uh, we work with House of Fraser and they wanted to launch a Christmas campaign with a difference. So as we know, over the trading period at Christmas, the marketing space is extremely cluttered. So what the, the brief was here was to, to develop a campaign which heroes the House of Fraser customer and supports them in achieving their goal of building strong relationships and giving an imaginative, exciting and relevant online shopping experience. So what they did was ask their customers to submit stories about the worst present or the oddest or strangest present uh, they, they've ever received. And within a four week period, they had 908 individual customers um, sending in their stories. Um, on site, we tracked it, it made the site sticky. People kept returning to read and engage their stories. Um, it had a huge impact on traffic. And they then launched a multi-channel promotion to encourage people to go to the site, not to shop and not to buy, but to engage with fellow customers and the content. And of course, ultimately, this had an impact on their bottom line in terms of then converting to sale. So, so as you can see, rather than simply um, messaging direct to your customers, you can use user-generated content to, to take a different approach. And as we saw with Domino's, um, that you don't just have to uh, use this from a marketing perspective, there are also a huge amount of insights you can gain from asking um, customers what they think. When we think about conversations, by the very meaning, they're two-way. So the, the campaigns that we've looked at so far talk about how you can use generate content to engage and start conversations with your customers. But actually there's a lot to be said for listening first. And, and we find that across our whole network, 12% of reviews actually include explicit 
suggestions about a product or, or a service. And these don't all reside in the one-star reviews where, you, where your customers are, are dissatisfied, but rather the majority are in the four-star reviews where customers are happy and they want to work with you to make things better. And a, and a great example of this is, um, is Dell. So Dell have a firm commitment to a long-term user-generated content strategy to the extent where if one of their products does not achieve a 4.5 rating, that product owner is encouraged to discontinue that line or has to relaunch that product. So at the moment, one of Dell's current notebooks has 20 features that have been engineered and changed based on what their customers are telling them. So based on what the conversations that their customers are having. Now, if we think about that from a marketing perspective, there's huge opportunity here to talk to your customers about how you are a truly customer-centric business. By listening to customers, Dell have been able to really make change that, that customers want. And that has enabled them to drive marketing campaigns that can be truly authentic in terms of having a commitment to the customer. And from the customer's perspective, they know that they're getting products that they want because people like them have helped build them. So what we're suggesting is that so social conversations are two-way. You can use user-generated content to, to start and open and engage those conversations, but it's also important to listen to what customers are, are telling you as well. So if I'm quickly to, to summarise everything we've, we've covered in the last sort of 15, 20 minutes, I think it's fair to say that we know that customers are changing and that the businesses have, have to adapt to change also, particularly in the way that we talk and market. So we know that using earned media, so using user-generated content across your marketing channels, uh, improves conversion and the bottom line, which is obviously important to everyone, but, but also provides consistent cross-channel messaging enables you to build um, trust through transparency that, and that authenticity element that we were talking about and can ha genuinely help you improve the products or the services that you're offering. At Bizarre Voice, each month we serve 13.8 billion impressions of user-generated content. So we know that businesses are already unlocking the value of social conversations on their website. But now I think we think there's a real opportunity for, for marketers to start doing the same um, and to start amplifying their customer voice through their marketing channels by talking to their customers in a, in a slightly different way.